welcome to Explorations. Today we're talking with Arvind Singhal, who is the Samuel Shirley and Edna Holt Marston Professor and Director of the Social Justice Initiative at the University of Texas at El Paso. Over the past years, he has published and researched widely on the positive deviance approach to change, transformation, and innovation. In this second of a four-part interview, Arvin shares how he was involved in the early applications of the concept of positive deviance to a host of other challenging issues, such as reducing MRSA infections in hospitals. So let's get to it. Yeah, I was thinking about the, the uh, especially his experience in Vietnam. You were wondering about these mothers who were uh, nourishing their children with little shrimp and greens from the rice fields and change their feeding habits. You wonder if, if they were also done fed that way by their mothers and their mothers and their mothers, <laughs> you know, or or did they just figure it out at this generational point in time? It's always have you got any any sense about that? Whether it becomes a, a cultural sort of heritage, positive. You know, you know, you you ask this question, and it's such an important question. And I remember uh, asking a similar sort of question. You know, like why do they do what they do? Where did they learn this from? And um, of course, you know, uh, you're intrigued by that. Uh, you know, did they learn it from their mothers who learned it from their mothers? And, and Jerry Sternen said, Arvind, that's a wonderful line of inquiry. And you're a scholar and you should pursue it. <laughs> he said, from my perspective, as a practitioner, who's trying to solve problems. It is a wonderful question for Arvind to pursue. For me, I'm not that interested. You know, if you do the work and you figure, I'm not that interested in figuring out why do they pick up teeny tiny shrimps and crabs which are available for the plenty in paddy fields, which others don't. I'm just interested in the fact that the resources exist for these people in their own paddy fields to pick up these teeny tiny shrimps and crabs and shellfish and come home and remove the crust so that you're left with the pulp. Because now if you go back and dig, and this is something that Jerry had done, he said the common story in Vietnam was that crustaceans, the shrimps and crabs and shellfish, they are not good for a child's stomach. Oh. Because a child is not able to handle them. That's the story. And of course, they're not able to handle them on their own because, you know, how are they gonna remove the shells? But if the mom can remove the shells, then, you know, then it is accessible uh, to them. So in, in some ways, the identification of a certain non-normative behavior also begins to explain to you what the dominant story is. You know, the dominant story being that children cannot handle these things. And that's the reason why these little teeny tiny shrimps and crabs, which are there for the plenty, you don't even look at them. You begin to look at them as duck food or, you know, chicken food. Wow. Uh, also, the notion that so I mean you know so when you if you peel these layers, uh, these narrative layers, I completely understand what Jerry is saying. He's saying, Singal, why are you so in well? He he wasn't saying why are you so interested. He was saying if you're interested in pursuing that question, do it by all means. That's an important question to pursue. But the important thing for me is that this is the little difference in behavior that is making all the difference. Right. And, and, and the resources are uh, accessible to all. As also like, as you know, I and mean, one of the other things they found was that some of these mothers were adding sweet potato greens. Uh, and, you know, we, we think of sweet potato, that's, you know, linguistically, the narrative is about the potato and the sweetness of the potato. You know, that's how our reality is structured. But I mean, there's no potato without the greens. And, you know, the greens of the sweet potato have lots of rich minerals and a lot of micronutrients, which are good for the child. 
And then if you begin to say, oh, yeah, yeah, why not sweet potato? Then the next day, as happened in Vietnam, people said, well, why do we throw away carrot greens? They're not going to kill my child. Or why do I throw away radish greens? They're not going to kill my child. So now you get into this notion of greens. And, you know, the story expands in some ways and possibilities emerge which weren't there before. Because there's a lot of green in Vietnam. I mean, hello, you know, the mighty Mekong and, you know, you can grow three crops of rice in Vietnam. So uh, it's, it's again that lens which allows you to say, wow, I didn't see this before. You know, I didn't see the green leaves before. I didn't see these little tiny shrimps and crabs uh, before as a source of nutrition for my children before. And you know it's accessible to all. It makes so you the wisdom. No, yeah. But it makes you wonder what stories are we living in in this culture uh, that are uh, keeping us from solving some of the what look like intractable problems that um, because we just have a story <laughs> that is that is informing our, our reality in a way that is in a sense occluding our vision. Um, so true, so true. I remember Rick um, uh, when Jerry first went to uh, the VA hospital in Pittsburgh, uh, he invited he told the CEO, uh, you know who had invited him that uh, um, because the CEO said, well, you know, how do we do it? Jerry says, oh, you got to invite everybody. And the CEO was like, invite everybody? What do you mean? He said, like, yeah, invite everybody who works for you. He said, you mean uh, uh, doctors and nurses? And he said, no, 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 everybody, no? He's like, everybody? Yeah, I need doc. You invite your doctors and you invite your nurses and you invite your cooks and your cafeteria workers and you invite your transporters and you, you know, the physical therapist, the occupational therapist, the chaplains, and please don't forget to invite the patients and their families. <laughs> now, this is not the story, right? It's like, what? He said, yeah. And please, would you little, you know, put a little PS and say that none of you are mandated to come to this meeting. But if you wish to solve the problem, if you wish to not infect your patients, because this, these are the hospital infection rates that we have, you know, if, if you feel for your patients, uh, you're welcome to attend. So, you know, the book that I wrote out of that was titled Inviting Everyone, Healing Healthcare Through Positive Deviance. Because, I mean, I put that in the title. Because the narrative of positive deviance is not come here, listen, I've got something to teach you. The narrative of positive deviance is my premise is that there are some of you who've solved the problem. The wisdom is here. Are you interested through your own capability to unearth that wisdom, which is there and you may not even know it, and find a way to amplify it? And if you're interested, please come. So I have to tell you, Rick, this. The meeting begins and, uh, you know, they're like 140 people in the auditorium. Uh, you know, they have to hold it in an auditorium as opposed to in a conference room, you know, with the CEO presiding. And guess what? The, the number of medical doctors probably was the smallest. I mean, you'd be lucky if there were 10, you know, medical doctors out of those 140. There were some patients. There were some patients' families. You know, they're nurses and, you know, cooks and chaplains and transporters and, you know, all that. And Jerry begins by saying, who here, may I ask, is in charge of infection control? And can you imagine how many hands went up? One, two, two hands up, you know, in the corner. It's like, oh, sir, who are you? Oh, I'm, you know, Dr. Mark Muder, and I'm the... Uh, chief of uh, infections, infectious disease. So, okay, yeah, you'll be interested in infection, of course. And then who are you, ma'am? Oh, I'm Cheryl Cunningham. And, you know, I work for Dr. Muda. I'm his infectious disease, you know, nurse. And Jerry said, I know nothing about infection control, but I can tell you your organization has a problem. 
<laughs> and this has nothing to do with uh, Dr. Mooder and uh, Cheryl Cunningham. But do you think, I mean, I, and I know nothing about this, but you know, what about uh, the chaplain who takes his Bible from one heart to the other? Is he just transferring the word of God or is it a little more than that? Because we know MRSA, you know, uh, lots of hospital acquired infections spread by touch. And he said, you know, what about the transporter uh, who transports a patient, you know, from their room to the x-ray lab and, you know, to the therapist and then back to the room? Or, you know, what about the janitor, the housekeeping staff who's taken his mop from one room to the other? Is he just sort of cleaning the floor? Is he not a wet? And that was, you see, so that's how it all begins. You know, it's a completely different narrative. And in essence, he was saying the wisdom to solve the problem lies with everybody. Not just with Dr. Mooder and his nurse, which was, and the next day, 40 people showed up. Half of them were not even there in the last auditorium because Jerry at the end of the auditorium meeting had said, you're welcome to come tomorrow. I'll be there and feel free to bring somebody whom you think would be interested in this. And he said, oh, Mr. CEO, do do you give them permission to come on their own? And he said, of course, of course. Yeah, so now they had the, and bring others, yes. And that's how the group began. And the people who walked in the next day were the ones, there were some patients, there were some you know, nurses, there were some transporters, there were some chaplains, and boy, now you can look at solving the problem from the wisdom that exists in all these communities. So very different narrative of how we are trained to do this kind of work.